Hello friends, it's EYS. How are you? I hope you are doing well. So friends, as you know that on our channel, we are covering the syllabus of UPSC Civil Services and for this purpose, we have started MCQ series of different topics like Ancient India, Modern India, Medieval India, Environment and Ecology and also other topics are in the offing. So friends, we will cover these MCQ series till 31st May, that is uh, one day before your prelims. Uh, your prelims of 2019 is scheduled on 2nd June and we will end this series only one day before your prelim that is on 30, 31st May. So daily 5 questions of each subtopic are covered so approximately 1100 to 1200 questions of each topic will be covered. So if suppose if you are following this series daily then how much confident you can be in your prelims exam while you will be attempting the exam in the exam hall. So if you want to be confident in your prelims exam and want to clear it with great margin stay tuned with us subscribe to our channel and please don't forget to press the bell, bell icon so that you get the latest notification. So let's start our lecture of uh, ancient India that is lecture number 8. So first question is which of the following statements with reference to Kautilya's Arthashastra is incorrect. So you know that Kautilya wrote Arthashastra. It was kind of uh, a, a treatise on state that what state should be and what are its elements and uh, uh, so we have to find which of the following is incorrect. A option is it was the first Indian text to define state. Second, it explores issues of, issues of social welfare and the collective ethics that hold a society together. C. It does not recognize the concept of private or land ownership. D. All of the above are incorrect. So let me tell you friends that <coughs> that uh, C option is incorrect that that is it it, it, it does not recognize the concept of private land ownership it, this statement is un incorrect because uh, uh, the Katalya in his Arth Shastra sh says that that private uh, ownership uh, is 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 is, uh, is 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 should be recognized and it should be protected by the king so it, it is the responsibility of the king to protect the private land ownership of the people from any kind of kind of you can say invasion or possession or accession so this this is this this C statement is wrong so friends all these are correct that it was the first Indian text to define state earlier text that we have we have it is not the case that we this is the first text of in the first Indian text as you know that we have Rig Ved as the oldest lit Sanskrit literature of uh, literature of India but uh, but also in uh, they were they they, these literatures like Dharma Shastras or Vedas they, or Upanishads, they were more dealing with, with philosophical ideas and religious affairs. They were more concerned with religious rules. And they were less concerned. They were less concerned with state. That they, they were they were so less concerned with state that even the state was not defined in them. Actually, the reason was that that at that time the state was not that much uh, had not gained that much importance. It is only after the rise of Mahajanpadas, that is after the rise of Magadha Empire, the state gained the importance. So state as an institution gained an importance. So the first treatise on 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 state. Uh, on uh, for which which defines state is Kutalya's Arthashastra. It is oldest treatise on state. So also friends, B option is correct because uh, 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 when when uh, is this his Kutalya's uh, Kutalya's Arthashastra says that when any natural calamity takes place or any type of invasion by enemy takes place or when 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 his his uh, his subjects are in problem, then king must initiate public welfare initiatives like. Uh, uh, like uh, distributing food and all those things so that the people can get benefit of that so this is this is b option is also correct so option b says that uh, the earth shastra explores such issues such as advising the king that in times and in areas devastated by famine, famine epidemic and such acts of nature or by fire he should initiate public projects such as building irrigation projects building forts around major strategic holdings and towns exam taxes on those those areas affected this is all about your first question. Now let's move to, move on to the second question. The second question is the Surya Siddhanta composed in the early 5th, 6th century AD was an influential work dealing with. So friends, there are five Siddhantas uh, in, in uh, ancient India. So the Surya Siddhanta is among, among one of them. So it is dealing with. So we have to tell what, with, with which it is dealing. So A is concept of sine angle. B is role of sun's energy in the evolution of life on earth. C is declaration of sun as a supreme soul of soul of universe. D is formation of solar system. So let me tell you friends that the first option is correct. That is concept of sine angle. So friends some of the let me tell you that why the A statement is correct. Because uh, some of the earliest works on the trigonometry were held in India. So trigno in, in, in case of trigonometry India has a great contribution. India's ancient uh, ancient times has great uh, contribution. And in this 
contribution the surya siddhanta has a unique role to play because it defined the sine angle and also it gave the concept of sine angle and it defined the relationship it also gave multiple uh, other uh, other concepts like sine angle cosine and inverse angle so all these it is this this is all about this siddhant surya siddhant uh it, like uh, it 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 uh, defined the sine as the modern relationship between half an angle and half a chord while you also define the cosine versus sine and inverse sine so soon afterwards other an in indian mathematician and astronomer aryabhat collected and expanded upon the developments of siddhantas in an important work called aryabhatiya so now let's move on to third question who was the first person to give rules to compute with zero so friends here we have been asked that this is zero that that who taught us how to use the zero for the first time The options are Aryabhata, B. Brahmagupta, C. Pingala, D. Bhaskara. So most of the most of you people will say that it is Aryabhata, but it is wrong option, friends. The right option is Brahmagupta. He was the first person to give rules on on zero. So in in his book Brahm's Pratik Siddhanta, he gives he he gives how to use the zero in the uh, arithmetic operations in the arithmetic operations in mathematics, and also he in in this Brahm's Pratik Siddhanta, he also gave the concept of negative numbers and how to use them in the how to how to use them in the arithmetic operations of mathematics. So it is the Brahmagupta who who gave this concept in Brahm's Pratik Siddhanta in seventh century. So this work considers not only zero but also negative numbers, and and uh, and also gave the algebraic rules for their elementary operations of arithmetic with such numbers so friends uh, uh, his rules are uh, almost similar with the uh, mo modern mathematics rule but in some instances he differed with dif differs with modern standard like uh, like he differs in the definition of value of 0 divided by 0 as 0 so brahmagupta according to brahmagupta 1 plus 0 is 1 1 minus 0 is 1 and 1 into 1 multiplied by 0 is 0 so this is this is this is this concept is ma uh, is matching with the modern the modern standard definition modern standard use but his his understanding of of division of 0 by 0 itself was wrong it was only 500 years later that another mathematician and indian, indian mathematician uh, uh, explained that 0 divided by 0 would 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 become infinity and not it would not be 0 so the proper understanding about this was gave by bhaskar after bhaskar to uh, after 500 <laughs> year later in 12th century so you can see that and, and uh, that how much contribution we have done in the in the knowledge of world so we you, you can't say that india like, like the british used to say that india is an ignoble country it is an it is a country full of ignorance there was there was no such case it was basically to to degrade the indians and their moral and their psychological level so that they, they, these people saw themselves as worthless and and see british as the only people who know every any everything and they have come to reform the indians so this was basically to justify the rule over india so you can see here that how how india contributed in various ways now let's come to the fourth question the famous chinese pilgrim fa hin could not have visited which of the following historical places so fa hin friends you know that fa hin uh, uh, visited during the reign of chandragupta 2 that is during the uh, during the gupta empire so, so gupta uh, uh, gupta empire the ruler was chandragupta 2 during during whose time he visited so the options are uh, we, here we have been asked he could he have not he has not visited which of the following places gandhara second kapilavastu third Ka kasi fourth patliputra friends let me tell you we have to select the option now option correct option now now friends let me tell you that fahin came to the land route that is he entered uh, uh, through the through the uh, through the uh, now present day pakistan and uh, through the through through afghanistan area so obviously he visited gandhara because gandhara comes in in between that route so also friends he visited kasi and also visited kapilavastu and patliputra in patliputra he stayed there for 3 years for, by by uh, by learning sanskrit and by converting the buddhist text into into his own own language because the main purpose of of his was to collect the buddha he was to see the land of uh, uh, land of the was to see the bus place of buddha and also to collect the important texts that were written about buddhism so he uh, all, uh, he visited all those places that had an association with Uh, Lord Buddha. So, which of the uh, and so here D option is correct. So, none of the options A, B, C is correct. He visited all these, uh, 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 all these places. So, here is the explanation. So, he visited Peshawar, Mathura, Kanauj, Saraswati, Kapila, Vastu, Kushinagar, Patliputra, Kasi, and Bodh Gaya. 
so he visited during the reign of chandragupta too please remember that so he also stayed in uh, patliputra for 3 years studying sanskrit and copying buddhist texts now let's move on to the last question of ancient india lecture junzang uh, studied the studied in the famous nalanda university first of all friends who don't know that he studied in nalanda university please remember this fact it is important he junzang studied in the famous nalanda university a major center of buddhist learning in that period so which of the following is from the account of the nalanda given by junzang so he gave he, he went, while he stayed there he learned there about buddhist uh, about buddhist religion he gave an account of nalanda university so we get most of the information from junzang so we have to we have to know that what was what was in the accounts mentioned by him first there was no such truths in nalanda and everyone just followed their own conscience do uh, second there was a tradition of strict separation between old and the young learners out of reverence third is the gatekeeper of nalanda asked the new and friends difficult questions and were allowed to enter only when they answered these questions so we have to choose the uh, correct uh, answer using the codes below so friends let me tell you that first statement is completely wrong the rules at nalanda were very strict and they were they were followed by everyone and 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 these rules were very strict and no one can follow their own conscience basically the rules that was that were uh, that were enunciated enunciated by the lord buddha they were followed and they were followed in a strict manner so first statement is wrong and second statement is also wrong that there was a tradition of strict separation between the old and young learners there, there was no such case it uh, the old and young learners they they sit they used to sit together they debated with each other they shared ideas with each other and they learned from each other so second statement is also wrong but the third statement is right that when you when 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 a, when a person used to go to the nalanda university he was not given an entry straight way he 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 he, he had to answer the certain questions which was asked by the gatekeepers being sitting there we uh, so being sitting there so that that's why the, he 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 asked the questions to the visiting persons and he used to ask the questions to visiting persons and the persons had to answer it so uh, the as jun jung said that mostly out of 10 7 or 8 people uh, were not able to answer those questions so only two two or three persons entered entered nalanda university uh, out of every 10 10 persons so which of the following statement is correct that is third only c option is correct so here is an explanation Uh, that uh, i have uh, dark the important points they follow the teachings of buddha in all sincerity the rules of monastery were strict and everyone has to follow them so discussions were held throughout the day and the old and young mutually helped uh, one another also gatekeeper asked new and friends difficult questions <coughs> so this is all about friends today's lecture if you liked it please like it share it and please subscribe to our channel Uh, and uh, lastly friends let me tell you that uh, if you want to subscribe to the pdfs of these mcqs you can whatsapp us at this given number that is 8968426481 so as i have already told you that daily five questions are covered and this will be covered till 31st may so approximately 1100 questions will be covered of each topic so friends for the purpose of our motivation as well as for the purpose of your affordability we have kept a minimum subscription fee of rupees 100 for the entire course of mcqs of ancient india what it means it means that you will be subscribing to 1100 questions of ancient india that is you will be subscribing to all the pdfs that we are uploading till 31st may by just paying rupees th- uh, rupees 100 so this is very very minimum cost that we can kept we can keep for the purpose of your affordability and for the purpose of our motivation and friends please support us if you want us to continue these series because we are doing this for your benefit and also friends for this we need motivation so keep supporting us now last la- uh, lastly friends there are other courses run by us on this channel like on environment medieval india ancient india modern india for which the subscription fee is different and let me explain you about those courses we have environment and ecology series ancient india series medieval india series Medi- modern india series the videos are available on youtube or for free on our channel but the cost with the cost of fee uh, for the pdf series for environment we have kept it, it is at it f- 50 ancient for, for ancient It is hundred for medieval also it is hundred for modern also it is hundred so the total amounts to rupees three fifty so uh, if if a student wants to uh, subscribe to all these in a package form then we are offering a discount of seventy five to them uh, to such students and they will be getting all these series in in just rupees two seventy five so friends as I have told you that uh, that for, for, for from each topic approximately eleven hundred questions will be covered so if you multiply eleven hundred with four topics then then how much questions will be there uh, there will be 44 question 4400 questions so you will be getting 4400 questions in just rupees 275 so it is a very minimum amount that we can keep for your affordability 
you can go go into the coaching institutes that are that are brick and mortar based and you can see how much they are costing to the students and, uh, today uh, today itself uh, uh, a coaching institute I don't, I don't want to name here uh, they announced the plan the crash course basically they announced that they will cover your prelims by by covering 4000 questions and they they are charging for this 25000 so you can see that what is the difference between online teaching and 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 this brick and mortar based coaching so there is we have kept minimum cost so this it is not we are not we are not here for money minting we are here for help so but we are we also have to sustain ourselves that's why we are keeping this minimum fee so friends uh, some some may doubt that if videos are available then why to subscribe to subscribe for pdf so friends let me tell you at the end of the day you will not be able to see the 20 to 25 minute long videos because at that time you will not only have to revise ancient india you will have to revise environment medieval india modern india science and tech current affairs and history polity geography economy and everything you have to revise at that time economic survey will come also come indian yearbook will also come and th then you will become confused and also friends at that time you can't read bulky books because you will have lot of material at your at your at your uh, at your table or in your hand you, that you will have to revise so for that purpose there must be the the, the prelims uh, prelims is clear, cleared in a way that that revision is it has taken place at least three times and enough questions have been sold and your basic concepts are clear so these these mcqs are designed in such a way that your revision takes place and your basic concepts are also covered and not even a single concept is missed that is important from your prelims point of view so friends this uh, this uh, also this revision is in a quick manner so it will save your time also and revision is also by practicing the mcqs that will be that is you are you will be practicing enough questions so so it is it is it is a kind of solving a test series so this is the advantage of subscribing to these pdfs so if you want to want to subscribe them you can whatsapp us at this number this number that is 8968426481 Lastly friends let me tell you that we have a telegram channel also and you can join uh, on our telegram channel by, by, the, by, by the link which I have provided in the description box. So you just have to go to the description box and check the link and then you can join the telegram channel. Those students who don't know how to join it let me tell, explain to them that, that there is an app called eSandesh that is available on Google Play Store as well as on App Store. It is unofficial app of telegram so basically you will, you will have to download it and by downloading it you will see here at search box when, what you have to do what you have to just copy and paste the link of my channel here when you will paste the uh, channel uh, link of my channel here you will get to my channel and in this way you can join it and 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 you can remain stay tuned with us and stay updated by our initiatives so this is all about friends today's lecture thank you thank you very much please subscribe to our channel and please do not forget to press the bell icon because all the initiatives that we are launching on the youtube you must get must must uh, you must be updated about them for the exam of your upsc 2019